The increase in school abductions in Northwest Nigeria is putting the future of young people at risk. Schools are being shut by state governments, and where they aren't shut, parents are afraid to let their children go to school. The situation could lead to an increase in the number of out-of-school children in the country, which is already estimated to be 13.2 million, the highest in the world. Yusuf Lado had yet to learn to read or write when his school closed for fear of attacks by bandits. The seven-year-old is no longer thinking of becoming a doctor and is now training to be a welder. No fewer than 10 schools in Nigeria have been hit by armed groups since December, with mass abductions taking place. Now, humanitarian agencies warn that the rise in school kidnappings is disrupting the education of hundreds of thousands of children. The situation in education in Nigeria is probably at its uh, biggest crisis point at, at the moment. There are in the region of 13.2 million children out of school in total, which is the highest uh, number globally. Um, and it, it really is of, of concern that uh, the this has become a money-spinning exercise uh, where uh, schools have become an easy target for kidnappers and resources have become available uh, to, to pay the, the kidnappers off. Yusuf and all his siblings have now been pulled out of school and his family has fled to village. The United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, estimates that more than 1,000 schools are closed across northwest Nigeria. By Kaduna State Education Commissioner, Sheho Mohammed, he says he's working to keep schools open. We have the local vigilante, uh, the hunters around each uh, community or around each uh, institution that are helping the community to keep surveillance around the environment and feed back, give feedback to the community and then in turn give uh, feedback to the security agencies. Kaduna State ordered 13 schools to close on Monday after gunmen kidnapped about 150 students at Bessel Baptist High School. It is the fifth of such incident in the state this year. Public affairs analyst Shola Kuti is joining us from the United Kingdom to take a look at this very germane issue. Um, hello, Shola Kuti. Good evening and thanks for having me. Good evening and welcome. We're happy to have you. Now, what's Thank your you. take on the targeting of schools by armed groups? Well, I think um, this issue of targeting schools started, uh, I think, pre-2015, we all know. Uh, but at the time, we were made to believe that it was, you know, tag it was Boko Haram targeting these schools because one of the things Boko Haram said was that they didn't want, uh, they thought uh, Western education was Haram. So we assumed it was Boko Haram, but increasingly we're seeing even bandits, so uh, I, I think they're all terrorists, but bandits now also targeting schools and kidnapping children in large numbers. Uh, and I think it's a very worrying dimension uh, if care is not taken, most of the schools will, you know, will be closed down in, in those states where there's... A lot of them are already closed down. Yes, I, I heard that uh, in Kaduna, for instance, uh, 13 schools were, were you know, told to close down. Mm -hmm. It means those children are sitting at home doing nothing. We already know that the North has, you know, obviously, a high number of out-of-school children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's just very worrying. And it seems like the, the government is not really doing anything about it. I also think that it's a bit funny because we have the, a lot of money pumped into the Safe Schools Initiative and we're not seeing you know, any results from that. Well, how best can Nigeria manage its growing out of school human resources uh, so the country doesn't implode? I think you know, the first thing we need to do is make sure there's some security, especially in those northern states. I mean, the children down south still seem to you know, manage to go to school okay. Boarding houses are still open and all of that. But it's just a matter of time before these things spread down south. Uh, so it's very important that we get the security situation right first. Because the truth is that you can't, nobody, you wouldn't send your children, I wouldn't send my children to a school if I knew that there was a chance of them being kidnapped by terrorists. Mm -hmm. Now, the impact of this on education is, is glaring, it's obvious to everyone. But what are the impact of this on Nigeria's economy? The inability of Nigeria's to, uh, children to go to school. Yeah, I think, I think it's the same thing. I think, I don't even want to talk about the economy as such, but obviously, 
uh, some of these schools that are being shut down are private schools. And obviously that means that people are going to be out of work. But the, the, the first thing we need to find is a resolution to the madness going on in, in that part of, of the country. You know, we cannot continue to you know, allow children to be kidnapped from schools on a nearly weekly basis. I mean, it's just unacceptable. What's your take on the negotiations with bandits who have sort of made it their daily source of living to kidnap children and then go for negotiation with governments? And then there is this, um, if you like, uh, confusion about whether the state government should negotiate with these bandits to release the children or do not negotiate with bandits. How does that sit with you? Look, from a security perspective, I mean, we are always told you know, government should not negotiate with terrorists or people should not negotiate with terrorists because what would happen then is that once you negotiate with them and you give them some money or whatever it is they want, then they will see an opportunity to do it again, they'll do it again and ask for something else. So I understand from that point of view, the, the question I always ask myself, if my child was one of the children kidnapped, would I negotiate with these guys? And the answer is yes, I would. You know, no matter if anybody likes, they can send me to jail or whatever, but if my child was one, was kidnapped, I would negotiate with them and I'll give them whatever it is I could afford to give them. Final word on the situation. What you, what, how do you see this panning out in the nearest future? Do you see any light at the end of the tunnel or do you see us continuing in this trend for how long? I, I think what, what really, you know, I'm a bit puzzled because Kaduna State of all states, is now becoming sort of like a hotbed for this kidnapping. Uh, and I find it a bit difficult to, you know, to comprehend because uh, the governor of Kaduna State is the tough-talking guy, Nasir al -Rufai. He has said he's not going to negotiate with terrorists. He's, instead, he's going to fight with them. But I don't see that actually developing into something that is workable. I don't see the reflection of that because it's almost as if the next week the bandits are going to do the same thing again because he's daring them. So I think there has to be another approach to this situation where there's some sort of impasse between the bandits and the government. Because if, if this doesn't happen soon, I mean, some of these children will start to you know, suffer you know, fatalities and we don't want that to happen. And I think it's just giving the bandits the courage to be able to do more. There's no point boasting about you know, shooting down bandits if you can't do it. Because at the end of the day, you're endangering, you know, more lives and it doesn't make any sense. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shola Kuti, for your time and insight on this subject. Thank you for having me. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.